Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Dina and it is Tuesday. It is August the 24th. So I have some stitching to share with you and a bit of a life update to share with you. So let's get started on the stitching. Today I decided to stitch on one of my whips I hadn't touched in a while and it was for a prompt. Uh, the prompt was to um, stitch on something that has more than one brand of floss. And this has silks and it has a DMC that I've had to substitute in. So um, I am using it for that. It's called Patriotic Sampler. And when you saw it last, I had stitched the um, top, this side, and I, I think I had these words in there as well. Just the one row here, right here. I've done down through here. So to, to um, pick this one up, I started in this top corner with this little star in this flag, and I wanted to get at least the flag done before I put it away. This is by Jeanette Douglas, and it is packed full of specialty stitches. This little star right here has two different kinds of specialty stitches within the star. They're not hard. The diagrams are great. Uh, you just, you know, you just have them there. And so these were specialty stitches, but this was just cross stitch. I am doing this one over one, one over two on um, 32 count. So it has a, a really pretty uh, muted look to it. It's not as vibrant as the colors would be if they were two over two. So let me show you what I did. I did hit my goal. So I got my star done and I got my flag completed. That silk variegated beautifully. I just love the colors in it. And this has um, three different colors in it, the dark blue, the light blue, and then there's white right in the middle. Anyway, that whole scenario there was a thousand and nine stitches, but I, it was split over two days. So I got that finished up today um, for that little flag, which was the goal that I had for stitching on it this time. So now the next time I pick it up, I can do the word happiness, the word and, and then it'll be another little checkerboard flag over here, um, which will probably be another whole day's worth of stitching. But um, um, that would make me about almost 50% through because I don't plan on repeating the border at the bottom. I plan on cutting mine off here and then I, I think I'm gonna put initials and dates and stuff at the bottom instead. That's my thoughts at this point. But I'm glad to have that stitching done. So the next thing I'm gonna work on, and, and hopefully depending on how tonight goes, I'll be able to come back tonight and give you an update on dogwood lace. I'm gonna be using it for two prompts uh, for my magazine monthly challenge. Uh, the word there is sunflowers and I am using um, the R in flowers for a red sampler, and that's my dogwood lace because it is a red sampler. And then in 24 Hours Across Stitch, uh, all the colors for one of the L's in the word all, I have lace for dogwood lace. So it will hit both of my acrostics, which I'm pretty excited about. So I'll give you a really brief life update uh, right now in our family uh, with my son's surgery there's lots of updates and then when that's over I probably won't tell you about our family for a long time <laughs> you'll be so tired of hearing about it but I just wanted to thank everybody for your prayers and your positive thoughts and uplifting us this morning uh, my son's surgery was today and um he was off work yesterday preparing, getting his food ready and getting his room all set up, his, his computer room all set up because we got internet yesterday. Yay! I can't tell you how happy we were that, um, that we would have internet uh, before his surgery because he's looking at two weeks of recovery time and no internet so he couldn't do video games, he couldn't watch very many movies, we had to use our phone as hotspots and it just wasn't. It wasn't ideal. So yesterday, 
he and his dad spent some time putting it together, testing it, finding the perfect spot for the router, everything. It's all done. I'm so excited. Especially for him. Uh, so, he wasn't at work yesterday, so we did not know there had been a big change in policy at the hospital until this morning. We showed up at 620, which is when he had to report him for surgery, and when I was trying to check in, the lady informed me that as of Friday, they made the decision to close all the waiting areas because of the rise in numbers in COVID, and that we would, I would not be able to wait with him before surgery or see him in recovery after surgery. I was welcome to wait in my car and they could call me on the phone and I thought, okay, well, if I was from out of town, that would be one thing, but I live here in town. I'll just go home as long as they're gonna call. So I told him goodbye and good luck and that I loved him and would be praying for him and, you know, and left pretty quick because you had to get out, you know, you weren't supposed to be there. So um, that wasn't the way I would have hoped to send him off this morning. But he called me when he got back in the um, pre-op room. It didn't take long. He was only in the waiting room about 10 minutes, he said. And um, he called me and talked with me and the nurse. And um, we went over. He, I helped him remember what medication he'd taken when because there's a very, you know, as you know, there was a strict rule about that. And we had followed it to the letter. And so um, I had helped him by setting up everything for him each day and double checking behind him to make sure it was right. And he just wanted me to verify for the nurse, you know, what we took when. He was a little nervous and I think he couldn't remember all of it properly. So we got that done. So I got to talk to him then. And then he texted me and said on the way to the OR, so I knew he was going into surgery. And so I sat here stitching <laughs> on my patriotic sampler. And, um, and then I got uh, a phone call from the surgeon. And uh, my husband and I got on the conference call with him. And he said the surgery went great. It was smooth as silk. And they had no problems whatsoever the whole time. That was what I wanted to hear. <laughs> so he said he was in recovery, our son was in recovery, and that the nurse would probably call us and give us an update soon, and that he, um, you know, would be there overnight and could go home in the morning, and um, depending on how well he did, they'd let us know what time to pick him up. Um, we got a call from the recovery room, nurses letting us know he was there and doing great and that he was still, you know, too groggy to talk to, but that they wanted us to know they had him and he was doing quite well. They encouraged us by telling us that because he's being admitted for an observation of 23 hours that he's allowed to have two visitors, only two, um, but he can have two visitors from 7.30 to 9 tonight. So we are going up there at 7.30 and we're planning on, we're planning on staying about an hour. We figure that'll wear him out. You know, um, he needs to, to rest. So we got another call from the recovery room about 45 minutes later, letting us know he had a room, giving us his room number and, you know, letting us know he's on his way to his room and that that's where we will go see him tonight confirming the visitation hours and all that. So, oh, about 4.15 this afternoon, which was probably about three, three and a half hours after his surgery, he called. <laughs> he called us. He sounded great. He sounded pretty awake and told us all about everything and um, told us what happened when he got there. He had prepaid his portion of the surgery uh, the day before online, and so he didn't need to be at the office where they set up payment plans, and that's where he thought he was supposed to check in, and when he got there, they didn't have him on their list because he'd already paid. And at first, it scared him because they said, you're not on our list for surgery today, and um, he panicked. He thought they had canceled his surgery Monday while he was off work and hadn't, he hadn't gotten the word. So they called upstairs and, and clarified what was going on. And when the lady told him, you need to be upstairs instead of here, he said he grabbed his backpack. He had a backpack with his telephone in it and things, you know, to entertain himself. 
And he said he grabbed his bag and he boogied out of there. He said, I just ran upstairs. <laughs> so that was a good thing. It went well. He's doing great. I can't wait to see him tonight. And um, I just want to thank all of you for your kind words, your thoughtfulness, reaching out uh, to me, sharing your own personal stories. He's going to have a whole um, period, you know, of adjustment and recovery. And I know that's going to be hit and miss and uh, we're just going to get through it. Uh, but I'm very happy for him to have this much behind him. And now he can really start moving forward in his life. And I'm thrilled, just thrilled that his health is going to be um, very much on the road to improvement. So thanks for all that. Thanks for letting me wax on about it. And I will let you go so that I can get back to stitching and I'll get started on my dogwood lace. I'll talk to you soon. Happy stitching, everybody. Okay. <clears throat> Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Dina and today is Wednesday, it's August 25th, and I am here to give you a little bit of a stitching update. I am happy to uh, let you know that I was able to pull out one of my projects to uh, meet a prompt, or a couple of prompts actually, in my um, acrostics for both of the Facebook groups that I'm working in. And then there was another prompt that uh, indicated you needed to stip, stitch on a whip that had leaves in it. And so I pulled out my dogwood lace because the dogwood lace pattern definitely has leaves all in these little sprigs of dogwood. I'm working on the border, however, so that's what I got started on. Last time you saw it, I had done the top border from left to right, and today I'm happy to report that I've extended that border about halfway, a little over halfway, to the left-hand corner. So here we are. I'm working right in here now. I haven't finished these two little sections in the middle, um, but I will be going on down to that corner that mirrors that before you know it. I think this is absolutely gorgeous. I love this baked apple. I think it's really, really pretty. So I just wanted to share that with you. That's been my stitching today. Um, have a, had a wonderful day. Got up this morning and got some, a little bit of straightening and, you know, housework stuff done. And then headed up to the hospital to visit with our son at 930 and we were able to stay with him until about 11. I got to go walking around the hallway with him on his walk, and we heard from his nurse that he had been a model patient, so that was good too. We left about uh, 11.30. We actually stayed a little bit longer than we were supposed to because uh, his um, coordinating nurse for the recovery team after the surgery, they have a huge follow-up process, and uh, her name is Amy, and she came and introduced herself to us, and she had a video uh, for all of us to watch that was after surgery care, and so she let us stay and watch it with our son, which was great for me, and uh, so that kept us there till about 11.30. So t my husband and I uh, left there. They were waiting on our son to at least have lunch to see how well he could tolerate just a little bit of something on his tummy. Uh, he's still on clear liquid, so we're talking broth, that kind of stuff. But um, we, my husband and I left and went to lunch, and as we were leaving uh, lunch and on our way to do another errand, I got a phone call from our son, and he was ready to come home. So we got him home today about 1.30, and he's been here ever since, and he's been up walking around and um, doing, you know, trying to keep exercising. That walking is really good for them. And uh, sitting up straight in a, in, rather than laying down. So he hasn't even been back to bed since he's been home. And it is almost six o'clock now, so he's done great. And my little stitching spot I created down in our living room has worked perfectly for him. He's been on the couch watching 
videos or YouTube or whatever he wanted to see. And I sat in my little stitching spot right over to the side of him and uh, was just handy, you know, in case he needed anything. And that has worked out well. I'll probably do that again tomorrow. So thank you again for all of your prayers and, and positive thoughts. It's going great. So I wanted to um, share with you my, my stitching progress, which totaled uh, 634 stitches. But I also wanted to share with you um, the fact that I am going to be participating in the um, monthly magazine Facebook groups uh, bingo, ABC bingo, that's going to start in September. And so uh, late last night, I sat down and created uh, my list of what I'm going to stitch for each of the letters of the alphabet that they included. They left out one. Um, and of course, it's one that's used a lot. So I won't spoil it for you, but there's one letter missing. Anyway, I've got a project assigned to every letter, and then I used a random letter generator just on my phone and picked the letters to put in the, in the bingo format, and I've printed it out, and I've got it ready to go. So I don't have it upstairs with me. It's, it's down in the office, so I, the next time I film, I'll share that with you because I hope to film again before the end of the month, and we'll go from there. So now I can put this project up. I can look at my prompts to see what else I might need to stitch and take something else downstairs with me. I, um, I'm looking forward to doing a little more stitching today if I can. So I hope you're having a great week this week of stitching. I know that I have, even though it's been kind of an interesting week um, because I couldn't go to the hospital I was anxious and didn't want to leave the house, didn't want to get too far from the home. So I had a lot of stitching time in, which has been wonderful. Well, I will talk to you uh, either later tonight if I, if I get finished stitching on my next item, or it'll be tomorrow. And when I do, I'll try to share my uh, bingo board with you for ABC Bingo. I hope you'll join us if you want to. It's gonna work very similar to WhipGo in that Carolyn Zook will be um, randomly generating the letter that she's calling every day. And you'll stitch, on, you only have to stitch 100 stitches or one hour on the project that you put on your board. So um, I haven't heard anything yet as to whether you can work ahead or uh, if you can catch up or anything like that. So I haven't heard any kind of rules, I guess. Until I hear, I'll just make up my own. <laughs> but I hope you'll join us. And um, in the meantime, happy stitching. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. This is Dina. Today is Thursday, August the 26th. And I'm here to give you a little bit of an update. First of all, I have been stitching today, but I'm continuing to stitch, so I'm going to wait and share that with you probably a little bit later tonight. I may jump back in here and show you my progress. I just took a break because I stitched enough of the stitches needed for another prompt, and um, <clears throat> but I'm not at a point where I want to stop yet, so I'm going to keep going after I post this, and I thought while I took out my phone to take a picture to post it, I'd go ahead and give you a bit of a brief update. I am working on the um, Field Mouse Hollow, so I hope to show you my progress later tonight. What I wanted to tell you today is about my ABC Bingo for the Monthly Magazine Challenge. And I got my blank bingo uh, chart right out of the file section of that Facebook group. And then I took their idea of a work page and just listed A through Z minus the S, because that's the letter that everybody knows now. That's the one they didn't um, include. And I, I paired all of my current projects with one of those letters. And um, 
In some cases, uh, at least one case, I used the same project three times. And in all but seven or eight other cases, I used them twice. So there are only eight things I've got on there one time. All the rest of the 25 I've got on there multiple times. So that's a great thing because then that's more work in each project. Then to assign my letter um, for each space, one through 25, I use just an, a random number generator and I put the number in the very first space and then the very next one, I put the letter rather, in the, in the spaces just like one across and then you know two, three, four, five, six, seven, that kind of thing. Um, and it worked out great. And you can tell it's random because one of the projects that's on there more than once um, is right next to itself. <laughs> it's on there once and then it's on there the very next space. Uh, so it's definitely random. But I thought I would share it with you. This is what mine looks like. And I think what I'm going to do, because it's um, with my WIPGO board, I'm, I've got it all colored and all that kind of stuff. But in here, I think I'm just going to mark it off when I do it. Um, I don't know. I haven't heard anything yet. I haven't gone back in the Facebook group to check to see if there are any other suggested rules or anything like that. Um, so I know one of these letters will be called Every Day by Carolyn. And um, I'll pick that project up and I'll do it. But uh, if you'll notice, this is how random they are. This is V, this is N, this is Y, this is A, this is C. So what happens is when they call, when she does a random generator of a letter and she calls the letter, wherever that letter is, that's the thing you work on. Um, so I think that'll be fun. It's just for the month of September. Uh, but these are projects that I really want to touch. Um, I had to get creative with a couple of them. Um, Z was hard for me. So I just said that Zorro also rode a black horse, just like in Sleepy Hollow, because that's the only way I could come up with a Z with my current projects. Um, I also did for X, I did Xmas, which is my nativity. So um, that's how I got them in. Um, so there's my bingo for September. I'm excited about it. I will be working on a new start, Hello Winter. That is um, the last new start on my WIPGO board, and I figured I might as well put it on here so I could get started on it in September. Um, I've got Giggles in the Snow in here, Crab Apple Tree, Field Mouse Hollow, uh, Pandemic, Dog Lessons for People, Dogwood Lace, Sleepy Hollow, Winter Quaker, um, Patriotic Sampler, Nativity, Mermaid, Crab Apple Tree, um, Long May She Wave, Giggles in the Snow, Gathering Eggs, The Autumn Bell Pool, and Mermaid. So a lot of these you haven't seen in a while. Um, so hopefully you'll enjoy it. But I wanted to share that with you and I'm gonna get back to stitching now in hopes that I'll have an update in a little while on my Field Mouse Hollow when I get to a point where I'm willing to stop. Talk to you soon. Happy stitching. Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Dina. It is Saturday, August the 28th, and I'm here to give you a brief update from my stitching today. Today, I wanted to stitch on a couple of prompts. One is the um, monthly magazine challenge acrostic. I needed to stitch on um, a mermaid for that uh, acrostic, and I was gonna look and see um, under the sea, the uh, sunflowers is the word, and I used under the sea mermaid for the U, and I needed to stitch on it for that. And I also was stitching on it for my um, 24 hours of cross stitch acrostic, which is all the colors, and I was using it for the A, and for that it was an aquatic figure, my mermaid. So, um, so this is my mermaid by Teresa Wentzler. That's how it's supposed to look when we get done with it <laughs> 10 years from now. <laughs> and I am working on this top border and I was very aggressive in my um, goals for WIPGO and I said I was gonna get half the border done. 
That ain't happening. I don't think, not by the end of this year. I have other things I want to stitch too much uh, to spend that much time that it would take for me to get this done because this is not a fast stitch. This is a very intricate, very intricate stitch. Not hard. It's not hard. It's just confetti everywhere. There's just not anywhere that doesn't have confetti. So there you have it. But this is what I got done today. I did 323 stitches in that top border. I put in this dark blue inside each of the shale shapes across the top. And then I came down underneath and there is a section that goes right up around this corner of each of these little um, ends of the shale that were three stitches each of a particular color of blue. And that was the only stitches in that whole bottom in that color. So I actually color completed two colors um, with 323 stitches. So that worked out really well. It's getting a little fuller as we go. It has a ton left. Ton. Anyway, it's getting there. But in order to get half the border, I would have to go all the way down here and repeat this pattern multiple, probably twice as long here. And then I would have to repeat this medallion, which was I don't know, three or four stitching sessions that I put into that, lots of hours doing that. So I just don't see how I'll finish it at the end of the year. It was an aggressive goal. I just didn't realize how aggressive because I didn't try to kill myself in my goals. It was my first year doing whip go and I wasn't, I was if anything being less um, stringent on myself than this. So this was sort of an accident. So there you have it. There's my mermaid so far not much to see down there all the actions up here but I got that done so that's my stitching for today but I love it I hit three prompts with it in three different groups so that was very efficient <laughs> uh, I do have one more uh, letter of each of my acrostics to finish so um, I think they're both just one. No, I, yes, one each um, to finish those up. So I, I'm hoping to get to do that within the next three days. If I get the time to stitch, I'd like to finish them. I also wanted to give you a really brief Coco update. I'm sorry I didn't get a picture of this. I didn't have my phone with me at the time. But since we've moved here, because the neighborhood is so far away from the highway, back off from the highway, and we are in the very back of the neighborhood, um, we get very little traffic. The traffic we get is the, our neighbors coming home. You know, it's just not, if, if you see anybody else in here, they're lost. But because my um, husband has a much better rapport with, with Coco as far as her being very responsive to his verbal commands, um, because he's her trainer, he takes her off leash. He takes her outside with him off leash now all the time and she absolutely loves it. She goes and sits in the front yard just like she owns the place. Of course she does. And um, she just lays there in the grass and watches everything going on, all the birds and the animals. And um, the only time she gets up and makes a move is if she sees someone coming toward the house walking. And usually it's because she wants to go say hey to the dog because she's met so many of the dogs here in the neighborhood and she is befriending them. So last night she met two more. Two, uh, my husband met another couple in the neighborhood that we hadn't met before and they have two dogs. And one is older and a larger dog and one is younger and a smaller dog. And Coco, and the older, Coco didn't like the older dog very much because he barked at her the whole time. But the younger dog was very friendly and wanted to play and so they hit it off so she um she got to play with the younger dog and the owner just kept the older dog over to the side you know on a leash and just let him bark <laughs> i think he was just you know here's a stranger he didn't know who she was but um anyway i don't know what my husband has started but i can hear a motor going like crazy um I don't know if you can hear it, but I'd be surprised if you could. So that's my stitching update. That's my cocoa update. I hope to be back tomorrow with more progress. And until then, happy stitching.
Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Dina. It is Sunday, August 29th. I can't believe that August is almost over. But today I have been working on a couple of prompts and I wanted to share that with you. I pulled out my crab apple tree. The last you saw it, I had finished spring and I had done all the way up to this uh, border right here, the colorful border, and I had stopped at the top and in the middle here. So today, when I picked this up, I started on the white in the middle, which says summer, S-U-M-M-E-R. And I did S-U-M-M, -M, <laughs> ran out of room in my Q-snap after that. And then I came at the top and I started working across the top border. I didn't get all the way across the top border. Again, I ran into my Q-snap. But since I was working for a prompt today, I was trying to reach 400 stitches and I'm happy to report that I reached 440 so here's my progress it's hard for you to see I'm hoping to get the light just right as you can see the white summer s-u-m-m -M, going down the middle there and then you've got the white border extending across the top 440 stitches today hit that prompt but the best part to me is I went ahead and got past the hurdle of starting the next season because I would like to put on my whip go board for next year another season in this because I did one season this year and that worked out really well. So I mentioned I was working on a couple of prompts. The big one was this one. This is my 24 hours of cross stitch working sheet here and I was working on the C crab apple tree and if you'll notice that completes the acrostic. So then I'm finished with this one for the month. Good thing, huh? Because I've only got one more day. <laughs> the other prompt I was working on was in a Facebook group, and that prompt was to work on something that either illustrated hot or cold. And to me, here in Georgia, our summers are hot. So since I was working on summer, and not just the word, but getting ready for that seasonal block of summer, I felt like that met the prompt. So I've got that done. I had to stitch a um, minimum of 300 uh, or for the highest uh, uh, level of achievement, uh, 400. So I did 440 stitches today, so I got the highest um, achievement of meeting that goal, which was great. So now I have one acrostic left, my monthly magazine challenge, that I'm missing one letter for and the letter is in and I had originally originally thought I would work on my nativity for that I'm not sure I will tomorrow or if I will come up with another piece that would meet the in um, but I will do something for in and get that finished tomorrow and then I will have finished my acrostic for the monthly magazine challenge just in time for the next one. So those are fun. Those help me pick what I'm going to work on. They help me get through all of my whips. So today, now that I have uh, kind of know what I need to do for tomorrow, I think I'm going to spend some planning time and uh, start getting ready for next month. I've got the ABC Bingo, uh, you know, from Monthly Magazine Challenge, which will have me touching every whip I own, I believe. Um, that, that are uh, current and we'll go from there. So um, I just want to look at other things I have going on this month. Uh, it's a busy month. <laughs> it's the month of our huge fundraising event. So I can't plan a whole lot because um, I'll be working pretty hard for that. So uh, what stitching I get done will be quite the pleasure. I hope you're having a great month of stitching. And I'll be checking in with you soon. Happy stitching, everybody. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. This is Dina. It is Monday. It is the 30th of August. So we have one day left in this month. And I am thrilled to death to be able to tell you that I finished my acrostic for the monthly magazine challenge. 
I'm so excited. The Magazine Monthly Challenge. I always say that backwards, forgive me. Anyway, this was my acrostic for this time. It was Sunflower. And I mentioned in my uh, previous segment that the only letter I had left was N for Nativity. And you see there's a check mark there. So I did stitch on it today. I did have a very busy day. I'll share that with you in a minute. So I had a very small amount of stitching time. So I actually did um, another prompt in another Facebook group where you were to stitch on a whip of your choice and then describe your favorite beach, which I'll do in the Facebook group. But um, I just went ahead and went for the lower number in there today because for two reasons. I didn't have a lot of time and the nativity is very confetti heavy. So this is what it's supposed to look like when it's finished. As you can see, it is extremely detailed and shaded. Um, so I did 101 stitches today and it's real easy to tell where that was. I worked on the angel's robe. I got this band around the neck down the front and then I did the next colors there's two blends in this and then the next color here is a is a blend as well and so I have I had that stitched so 101 stitches uh, beginning to work my way down the angels body I think I'm gonna get his body done uh, with his arms the tops of his arms done so that I can see how to place these wings around you make sure if I get off anywhere I'd rather it be you know that me fudging the wing than fudging his clothing and arms so I'm gonna do him first anyway that's what I had time to do today and I'm just thrilled to death that it finished out my acrostic and I'm finished with both acrostics and um, now I can spend tomorrow stitching on whatever I want. I, I do have some other prompts I could work on in a Facebook group, but I have till the, the 10th of September to get those finished, so I'm not in under any you know big time constraint, which is great. So I mentioned I would tell you about my busy day. I'll do that very quickly. I have spent time today doing the typical housework stuff, you know, um, linens and um, vacuuming and dusting and all that stuff you do. But then after I got finished with that, or right as I was finishing that today, Coco really started barking at the front door. And it wasn't, um, it, she, she was quite intense about it. And I went to look out the door and there was a car pulling up in my driveway, right almost to my front door. And there were cars pulling up, parking along the street and ladies were getting out and I didn't recognize any of them. And I thought, this is interesting. My only thought was, does this neighborhood have a welcoming committee or something? <laughs> anyway, as it turned out, they were at the wrong house. They were looking for my next door neighbor. And I don't know what the occasion was, but there were quite a few of them. And the poor lady who drove up my driveway, the minute she saw me stick my head out the door to say hello um, and to ask if I could help them, she realized she was at the wrong house and she was, you could tell by her face, she was just mortified. And she just backed right back right down to the street and parked. Anyway, we've, uh, we've had a um, man from the gas company come out and mark our, um, you know, gas line. And I'm not sure why, I guess my husband's working on a project out in the yard. And then my son felt up to walking a bit today, so he and I made it to the mall and we went into Books A Million. And he walked all around the store and looked at all the books and, and uh, magazines and things for about an hour or so. And that was a really good outing. And then we got a wonderful uh, protein shake for dinner and uh, headed home. I came home to a job in the yard. My husband had been trimming bushes and needed some help with Coco. Just, he didn't want her to not be able to be outside with him, but he couldn't watch her really well while he was pulling all those bushes down to the curb. So um, I sat out in the driveway with Coco for about just about an hour or so uh, today, talking with him while he did his job until, until I got up and helped him get the bushes, the branches on down to the curb when he finished all the trimming. 
Anyway, it's been a busy day, <laughs> but I'm thrilled that I got uh, to get started on my Monday uh, by uh, closing out, but you know, my second of my acrostics. I felt very accomplished about that. I hope your week's gotten off to a great start. I'm looking forward to a lot more stitching as the week goes by. Um, I'm hoping, anyway. So I will uh, let you get back to what you were doing, and I will talk to you soon. Happy stitching, everybody. Hello, everyone. This is Dina. I just wanted to give you a good view here of Giggles in the Snow with the cross stitching completed. Now I have back stitching to do and then beading. But on August 31st, I finished the rest of the snow shadows uh, here in the little girl's uh, between her feet, all around here, and then all of these little side pieces. So she's done. He's done. And now all I have left are back stitching, and then I'll go to the beads. But I wanted to give you an update because. I knew I could stitch on whatever I wanted to today, and I chose to finish the cross stitches in Giggles in the Snow. Happy stitching, everybody. Okay, this is the craft room so far. It's not finally finished, but it's pretty close. So come on in. Let me share it with you. Okay, we've just stepped into the room from downstairs, and this is what you step into when you come into the room. Here comes Coco to join us. This is my main stitching spot where you've been seeing my little snippets, and this cart will eventually go away. It's the last little remnants of things I've got to find homes for, but there's my iPad that I watch my floss tube on, my current new start I'm working on. There over in the corner um, are my guest spots for people that want to come and stitch, I hope, with me. Um, here are the little shoot virtues together, the afghan and the picture. They will be in my guest room eventually. But right now, they're up here, and I'm going to have to find a way to display them, or I'll wind up having to pack them away until I have a guest room to put them in. This little hole over here, you'll see there's a little television screen there. I'm thinking of putting a television screen there uh, to have an uh, <laughs> to have a ch uh, place to watch Floss 2, possibly, as it's streaming. Hey, Coco said hello. But I think that spot is calling for a bit of a couch, like a chase lounge or something comfy to sit in for those stitchers who like to sit in a comfortable spot. <clears throat> we have two dormer windows here. I'm sorry for the glare. Um, this is my uh, dual spot. Right now it's doubling as my sewing slash finishing area. Let me back up so you can see it a little bit better. This is a sit stand table that I got from Ikea. Right now it's in a halfway in between state. Um, I'll lower it enough to sew. You see my sewing machine is still in the box. And then when I want to do finishing work, I'll set the machine off to the side and raise it to counter height and all those drawers underneath there um, the shallow wide drawers are part and parcel of my uh, finishing materials and then the deeper uh, drawers that are, sh are shorter in width but they're deep that holds all my sewing supplies so that's kind of a dual purpose right now because i have my eye on a finishing table that i want but it's out of stock everywhere and once i get my finishing table it will probably go uh, somewhere out in here, out in the middle. 
um, so that I'll have th three different stations to work within. So I'm going to turn around now and show you. Here's my desk. You can see that's where I come up the door. It's the closest thing to the door. There's my Elan floor stand. There's my bright lamp. And in the back is my storage that I shared with you on a previous segment with all my current whips on the top. And then let's go back a little bit. This room has a fabulous hallway. So in my prior homes, I haven't had anywhere to put my sewing uh, materials. I have a large collection of sewing patterns, as you can see in those uh, drawers there. All of those manila envelopes hold a pattern. And the rest of this, all these boxes are fabrics that were in my basement. I had nowhere to put them. And now they're here, so I can see them. They're, they'll be my finishing fabrics and sewing fabrics uh, if I ever get back into making clothes again. So we got that along this hall tucked away so that I can easily get to them, but they're out of the way. Then if we go on down the hall, have a half bath here. And then we have the first of two storage closets. Let me get the light on for you. This first closet is my cross stitch closet. It is dedicated to cross stitch. So what you'll see there are shelves of fabrics and patterns and magazines and books. And on these shelves also, on this side, are all my projects that are on roller frames. I used to hang them from a hanging rod in a, in a closet, and I really like storing them that way. But in this configuration with these types of shelves, as you can see from my threads up here, if I put my rods like that, they would be turned width side to side instead of turning hanging uh, long ways. So they would take up way too much room. For instance, this one up here, Giggles in the Snow, is hanging one of the ways that I could do it. Um, and I just put it up there to get it up off away from everything so it didn't get dirty. Um, but I've got to come up with a better solution um, for these. Uh, this is the second or th this is the third way that I've stored them. So I'm not quite happy with it yet. Um, so, these are my cross stitch supplies. Then, I have a second closet. Again, the light, sorry. This closet is for seasonal decorations. You can tell I have my fall baskets in here. I've got, um, I've got presents that are already boxed and ready to go for next year. Uh, as I'm going out and then these are storages for decorations. These are finished cross stitch pieces that I'm storing in drawers to keep them clean. There's Christmas, here's the fall, autumn ones, as you can see in there. And then I've got another drawer down here it's got some of my Valentine pillows in it. So that's how I'm getting started there. This is a collection of frames. Um, some are pictures that I've got to put up, but most of them are frames that I'm going to use, repurpose them for, um, you know, finishing other projects. So over here in those boxes are my Jim Shore collection that are not Christmas. My Christmas collection is in the basement. So um, there you have that. And then these are tubs that are available for storage as I need them for more uh, of my seasonal decor. So as I make more cross stitch items, then I will have a place to store them. So let me spin around. I'm sorry if I'm making you ill. So now we'll come back down the hall. Coco loves this hall because this is where 
I toss her toys and she runs down the hall to fetch them. She's upset with me right now, as you can see, because mama isn't playing. Mama's talking to somebody. <laughs> so there's the, again, the finishing section. That box there is a second sewing machine. It was my mom's sewing machine. And then there's my cross stitching section and my guest area. So I think I've got it about done, folks. Um, no decor up yet. You see my walls are very uh, angled, so it's gonna be hard to get anything up on them as far as pictures. But down this hallway, I'll try to turn a little bit slowly. Um, as you can see, I have walls. So I'm planning on putting pictures on all of these walls all down this hallway, it's sort of like a gallery maybe, to, so I can display my cross stitch. I hope you like my tour. Um, this is the, uh, I guess this is the first day I felt like it was presentable. <laughs> And uh, hopefully it'll get even better as I get some uh, additional things in here and some decorations up. But I wanted to share it with you because I will be spending a lot of time here. Happy stitching, everyone.